topology in Edgeflow. Um, let's take a look at this model here and I'm gonna open up my outliner and I think first things first uh, before I go any further let's talk about a few things basic um, Maya kind of stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the wireframe so that is this little icon here the little blue s square with the white frame around it that's the wireframe so I'm just gonna talk about that just so I can see things uh, at a glance a little easier. Um, and then I'm going to grab, I assume these are all the low poly models here. Let's delete history it's on everything, just be clean. Periodically, I do recommend you uh, delete your history. Um, that's again under edits, delete by type uh, history here. And I just have it uh, pinned to my uh, custom shelf here. All right, so first, this organizes a little better. If I hit a create and um, so you might not even have this open. It's um, you might have modeling toolkit open. So if you open up your channel box, and then that usually has a layers palette docked at the bottom. Under layers, I'm gonna hit create layer from selected. So that means everything that is on uh, that I have selected gets put on this layer, right? So let's uh, rename this to uh, I'll do low um, for now, and then you know we can turn that off. I can unhide a bunch of this other stuff, which I assume is the high poly. Yeah, so that's the high poly. I'm going to group this for now. Hit Control G. We're going to call this high res. And then um, with that, I'm going to accept all these. We'll make a new layer from that. We'll call this high. Um, I'm not going to bother grouping the low poly just because well, I'm probably going to go through a process of combining and separating them out. Uh, so when you combine and separate, that usually kicks you out of that group. Uh, so it's not a big deal for me right now. Um, and then what I can do, so it gets a little hard to tell what's going on with wireframe mode when you have the, the, the high poly shown as well. Uh, but what I can do too is I can, you know, first I, we can toggle the visibility of each layer. Let's just use a low poly to be um, efficient here. All right. I um, actually don't know what the P is. I should I should know, but I don't. Um, okay, so we'll leave that by default. But this second marker on the layers menu is T is template mode. So when you hit template mode. Um, it'll show it in wireframe, but you can't select it, right? And then R is it'll show it as a um, I guess it's it's T for reference and a uh, T for template and R for reference. I think those those are the the short term of uh, the the what these things are called. Sorry, English is failing, um, but in R, it'll show you regular, let's turn off wireframe mode, it'll show you it, uh, the model has a regular object, but then you can't select it. So this is actually more useful for the high poly, right? So for the high poly, um, I can go to T, I can hit templates, that's just going to be giving me like an x-ray kind of view, which I don't usually like, and then I'm, I have it as R, and then that just lets me, that lets me have this on, and then I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting the high res as well right um whether or not i want to do oops the wireframe mode probably not um, in this case i'll probably only have the wireframe mode on if i'm just looking at the low poly but let's say if i'm trying to evaluate um the surface the topology here that's that's kind of a different story right um i'm going to just evaluate this more as a um, how does this look uh, topology wise and we can worry about conforming it or reconforming it to the high res later uh, I think in general wait let me see what's going on here okay okay all right um 
basically when you're doing retopple, you want to consolidate as many pieces as, as humanly possible. Uh, so right now you have the um, neck and the or you have the head separated from the body. Uh, for now, I think just to make my life easier, what I'll do is I will grab these. I'm going to split the neck off. And the reason why is just turn on symmetry. So the reason why I want to do that is I'm going to leave the face alone, and I want to integrate the neck with this here. So really what it, it comes down to is um, well first this consolidate into this here. Um you can probably just get rid of quite a bit. I'm gonna mesh this in so that um Let's turn that back on and I want to see where exactly is everything going. So for this collar, this is going to have to come up. Oh, okay. So we can consolidate these. Or not say consolidate, but if I take this edge, let's extrude that. Um, Okay, um, I guess from a design standpoint, I'm wondering if you need this color to come up that high. Um, but we can talk about design stuff uh, later. Um, I just think this might be, now that I'm looking at it from like a retopple standpoint, it's getting a little busy. And there are a lot of like shapes that are echoing each other. Um, so they're not like quite efficient. So right now, let's just add something here and then symmetry is not working for some reason oh, that's okay we'll do something like this and then I should be using modeling toolkit um, but I That's just going to mean I need to combine a bunch of your high res pieces together, which isn't a bad practice. You know, maybe I'll actually just do that just so you see um, what I'm thinking of. Um, okay, so let's just merge these merge shoots. I'm going to snap this to the center. Um, so, shortcut some keyboard shortcuts to snap things to the grid, right, because we're at 0, 0, 0. If you hold on the X key, um, you can snap things from each grid point. Um, if I want to snap from, like, vertex to vertex, then that's V. So I can hold down V, snap this to um, that vert, just like there, and there we go. And then I can merge those verts together if I need to. Right. Um, so something like that, right? Uh, let's turn off reference on the high poly again, and I want to see how this is broken down. Okay, so this is all merged together. Um, okay, so, okay, so a lot of it is like broken down in, in the way I'm expecting it. So we kind of need to have the um, low poly echo that as well. Um, but I'm going to add the neck to all this. It would just make your life easier when you're retoppling and baking, and um, it just makes rigging a lot easier as well, right? So, um, you know, we can pull this out to kind of conform. Something like this. Right? You'll probably need an extra cut, like say from here to here. It's because I think that distance might be tough to. It may not look right once you start baking. There's nothing to do there. There we go. Okay. 
You may not actually need this. What's going on? Oh, I see. That's because I never capped this. So let's bridge that. Um, do this. Every time I'm adding something, I'm going to try and, you know, move it around. Um, you don't want to just make a polygon and then leave it as is. Um, so par probably you'll have a better time if you <coughs> snap all this together. Um, I would even maybe consider doing another edge loop, say here. Um, so just so I'm not adding too much everywhere at one time. I'm gonna isolate it, and then I'm gonna that, that's gonna let me do this. And then we can bring this there. Um, this space though is kind of thin. And you'll probably have a norm that big problem there. Um, so in maybe in some cases it might be worth it to even bring it into high poly and have it all kind of line up this way or like pull this in. Um, and then you don't have to worry about having this what um, it's not an undercut, but like this tight space. But uh, and we can talk about that in class. Um, let's just talk about how do I add more or how do I add things in general to this? You've got a lot of divisions in the front and you don't have a lot of divisions in the back. So that's not a great thing. Um, we'll slowly kind of work our way around that. Um, I mean, I guess maybe the first thing is you could just cut from here. And then that will let you... Um, I have this, uh, this uh, assigned to hotkey, is edit edge flow. Uh, and that's going to add, average out, um, say, you know, when you insert an edge loop, it's going to insert it, like, flat. Um, <clears throat> and then what I do is I do is edit edge flow, which will average out the distance between two edges. Right, so that is um, shift right click and then edit edge flow. So you can kind of um, you know, systematically add edge loops and then relax it this way. Um, sometimes I just like deselect things as I'm going along because I don't want to. There are certain areas that I don't want to modify, right? That will give you an error like here, so we'll have to adjust that later on. Um, but that's that's not too big of a deal. Alternatively, um, you know, I'm doing edging edging split here, um, but that's always going to put it directly in the middle between two edge loops. If you just want to do the insert edge loop tool, which is shift right click insert edge loop tool, it's kind of the same thing but you can click and drag to place that edge loop. So you see how it's placing it uh, flat and it's not changing the contour. If I hold on shift as I do that, it'll automatically kind of average out as well. So you have a bunch of different options um, on how you want to manipulate the geometry that you're adding as you're going along. And this just makes life a lot easier, uh, especially at this stage um, where I'm just trying to add stuff in. You already have a lot of it blocked out, which is why I'm not going back into modeling toolkit. Um, because then I have to delete a bunch of faces, it becomes a lot more difficult to manage. So I'll just do it this way, right? Um, and this is actually getting messy. Um, since the symmetry for some reason is broken, let's take a look. I'm going to turn, let's just delete that, and then we'll delete this. I'm going to turn on my grid. I'm going to go show grid. Make sure that we have everything correct. Let's uh, snap all of this to the uh, to the grid. Make sure we're all at like zero zero zero. I'm going to um, double check where my pivot is to insert, snap that to invert, and then we'll, yeah, we'll make sure. I'm just going to leave history for free transformations. Um, I don't remember if I talked about freeze transforms before, but uh, so freeze transforms is basically going to zero out your translates, your x, your rotations, and your scales. 
So it's basically setting a new default um, for that mesh. I have, it, I have it set to a hotkey, but I'll do instance. So I, um, I just duplicate it as an instance. Um, that option is under, uh, what is it, edit, duplicate special option box. I just set it from um, before it's, if I reset the settings, this is what you would normally get. You will just duplicate a copy at the exact same position. But I'm doing an instance and I'm going to do a negative x scale on it. I hit apply and then we have an instance here. Okay, so let's turn on wireframe so I, I see more clearly everything going on. Let's add some edge loops here. Add edge loop there. Um, I could conceivably terminate it here. Edit edge flow works really well, except for when it hits the border edge, right? So I think I can give it a result if I add a dummy loop here. I'll slide it to the corner. Um, and then if I do the edit edge flow, I'll actually do it worse. So never mind. There will be an occasion where I need to do that. Um, but I guess that occasion is not now. Uh, as you're looking across your model too, you want to look for um, the planes, like for instance, how flat are the polygon here. Um, I don't think you want to create this harsh transition here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use, so let's, um, let's fix this edge flow here, right? So you've got kind of a, you've got a pole that is not sitting in like the logical points along your model. And I think that logical point is actually if I add an edge loop here, I'm going to get rid of these two. And then we're going to split this here. And then I'm going to split that to here. And then I get rid of this, right? Right. So that um, gave me a proper edge loop, like here and here. Um, but now I have an end gone. You know, I have more than four sides here. So what I can do then is I can split this loop. I can combine, I can take that down. And now we're back to quads everywhere. So this is now an official edge loop. That's an official edge loop. And I can terminate it, like say here. Right. So just doing, basically adding two edge loops, um, evening out your the front part of her dress or her uh, outfit here. And I'm just going to slide the edge here. Um, right, and then maybe we'll, um, I'm going to edit edge flow a few more times in different areas to get this to round out. Um, sometimes I mean, it's not foolproof, so you might have to just go vert by vert or hit the B key, turn on soft selection, right? So you can see the fall off is really big. When I hold on the B key and I click and drag, that takes my fall off lower. And then we can kind of move things around. So I'm not sure, okay, so what we're getting here to, if I look at this as this edge ring, right? I'm looking at the policy, I'm looking, looking at the edge flow and it's going up that way. Um, what I think what would be more productive is, I mean, typically I don't think you even need this. Um, you know, for games, we don't need to go that crazy. So I would just grid it out um, like this. Right, so we're, we're just back to like working essentially with a, a subdivided square. Um, kind of like what you have in the back here. That's, I think, all that's really necessary. Uh, you probably don't want these divots to happen. Um, so I'm just going to add edge flow a lot here. 
Let's set it just below there. Let's do that. Um, let me add a loop there. Right, so I'm really trying to get these to be more even. Um, I'm going to add an edge loop here because I think we're getting too sparse. Um, I want to continue to edit edge flow. I have something going on here. Oh, we created it. Okay, interesting. All right, so that isn't either something's not merged. Yeah, um, I think there was an error in the mesh, so then I can edit that. Um, I'm going to make sure that you have the beginnings of an edge loop going on here. I want that to also continue here, right? Um, I want this to continue this way as well. So this can be one edge loop that goes around. So that should give a lot of freedom to flex the neck um, and that should deform better, right? So that, so here's the issue, do I, how do I get rid of this triangle? Um, you could just simplify it and merge that, but then I think what is a better solution is I can just add edge loop here. Um, we'll get rid of these edge edges, delete edge. Oops edge here and then I'll rewire that to go this way or um, what you could also do is you could spin this edge hit G to repeat that hopefully okay so it doesn't always spin in the way you want it to so if it doesn't then you have to manually cut it and then get rid of that edge then there we go um, now the proper edge loop around the neck. You know, I can conceivably take this in closer. I can take this in closer as well. And then we can add another edge loop here if I want to preserve that shape. Right. And then from here, I'm going to even it out, even this out, even this out. Um, I'm going to add an edge loop in the middle because I don't like how wide those faces are getting. And then we'll continue to <coughs> edit edge flow. I still think we're getting too dense around the arm. But I'm, I'm going to find a solution as we go along. I think there's something weird happening here. So I'm going to add an edge loop here. Okay, so this is where edit edge flow kind of fails. And that's where I need a dummy let edge. And then that'll keep that volume better. And then we'll kind of relax these some more. I'll add another dummy edge loop here. And that lets me use edit edge flow more accurately. Um, this, now I can get rid of that edge loop. Let me get rid of this edge loop. I suspect we want to carry this edge loop one more time just to give maximum range of motion, right? So I think um, if I just do this for now, it's, um, yeah, so I'm going to carry that edge loop around one more. Oh, kind of like how you've already done it in the back. There we go. And then there you go. And now it, it, now I'm just left with the puzzle of how do I solve this? Um, I could solve that by I guess I can just get rid of that here. Um, we can get rid of this. No, I think we want to keep that. Pretty smooth. 
and for now, I don't like the solution, but it's kind of escaping me at the moment. Alright. There we go. How many edges is this? 14 edges around. Um, we'll just keep going. I'm really not liking how this is turning the density here, but um, I don't have an elegant, really fast solution for that. I'm going to continue to carry this down, um, make sure that we're getting the right number of divisions. Um, this, I think we can just carry down, simplify. I think when it comes to low poly, when in doubt, just simplify it. Because it's, it's a lot easier to bake down to like a single um, plane or object than it is trying to juggle um, multiple layers of complexity here. So one thing I also want to make note of is I want these horizontal lines to be fairly straight, just so that when the model rotates from um, you know up, up and down or forward and backwards then these edge loops actually support that functionality better. So what that really means too is kind of flattening out some of this. And it might take some um, finessing of your shapes to get this to, to work better, but this is just going to deform better. Um, I'm not sure if we need this. I don't Let's take a look at your high res. Yeah, OK. We don't need that. We could simplify this and get rid of that. And then we'll just simplify this, carry it up and down. Yeah, so we still have too few cuts in the front. Um, as I see things too, I'll get rid of some stuff. I think we can just get rid of. I'm going to terminate this here. That way, when I do an edge ring, I can just get rid of that middle one. I think you don't need this. Um, this is interesting. Um, you would probably. Oh, wow. Um, so I think the way I would do it, actually, is I would cut this out separate, and I would, uh, I think, I think you could just intersect this. Um, this really, this is a hard to say for sure because um, a you'd have to talk to your rigger uh, and what the rigger and a team wants to see, right? Uh, so let's just fix this here. Or just want to make sure I'm not imagining. Okay, so that is flat. Um, so we can make this flat too.
Mm. Bridge this and then I'm going to merge this. Um, I would just keep this as simple as possible. So delete this, delete this, and delete that. And then you can kind of reshape this. Something like that. Um, hold on. I'm not sure if you need this amount of depth. Depth. I'm kind of wondering if we could just get by with. Um, oops. leaving the outside silhouette and we can get rid of these in the middle um, but we'll have to take a look at your poly count in the end yeah typically to the for sure though you don't this is kind of unnecessary so let's get rid of this here oops not extrude let's delete uh, delete this and then we'll get rid of this edge loop there yeah that's unnecessary and then um, I'm going to make sure we don't have an end on there. Let's triangulate this. Um, we'll have to double check what your poly count is going to be in the end, and but I don't think we need this. Um, I, I would probably just collapse that. You can just let the, the normal map take care of that detail, um, but I'll we'll reevaluate this as we go along. Okay, so you're meshing that in. This is looking a little dense, so maybe um, we could just simplify as oops, as you get down to the foot. edge. Oh, well. Okay. In general, too, I remember when I was looking at this earlier, um, you want to avoid bow tying. Okay, so bow tying is when you get like a non-planar face like this. See how, um, say this one, if you look at it from all angles, it's pretty much flat. But then this one, you've got a twist to it, right? So that probably means that we just need to relax. We need to relax something, or we need to triangulate something. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, my initial breakdown, I think just you could just keep the boots separate. Um, so let me, I'm doing extract. This, get rid of that. Oh wait, yeah, they are separate. Somehow they were looking the same. Um, that's fine. Um, at this resolution that you're working with, you probably don't need to worry about this kind of super low poly um, edge flow for the knee and the other joints. So I would just kind of carry this around. Get rid of these triangles. Oh, okay. So um, when you look at the drive with the topology reference, um, I think so. The problem is this pole needs to be here. Right, so if you look at what example I had, 
see how these go straight down this is straight edge loop edge loop edge ring edge ring more or less an edge ring um so how do we do that how do we do that and then that's that will impact how you do this too right so you have an edge ring that goes down the middle here that's fine um, basically what I want to do is I want to take this I'm going to cut to here and get rid of that but then I'm starting to get an edge ring right so now I just need to kind of continue that up here um, and I think that solution will be say just carry this up here I can just um, kind of thinking on a bunch of different levels right now get rid of that. Uh, let's get rid of this, get rid of this, this, and I'll get rid of that. It's four and a half. Yep. So now I got an edge ring there. Um, I'm going to space this out here. We'll add another cut here. Get rid of the end on. And now I can space this out some more. Uh, oops, I did that wrong. I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, and then let's take a look back here. And then I can rewire this. And then there we go. This can go up here. Right, so now I'm shifting that pole higher and higher. This is getting just a, basically a grid so that the, the leg can go in multiple directions. Um, we can add this, cut that, and we're getting, we're getting somewhere here. And I'm going to continue to do this. This is going to make me just move things around a lot. Wait, so that's going to go up. This is going to go up. And I think at a certain point, you just have to kind of call it done. Otherwise, you're just going to add way too much geometry. Or like, um, you're going to have to settle for something here. Basically, what I also think you should do is make sure that these interior ones um, they're providing like the right shape for like the best deformation possible and that usually that what that means is having it flat along this treble area here like this flat flattening it out And then, yeah, um, honestly, the the pelvis area is pretty tricky. Um, it's I, it kind of takes a lot of time to get used to, and um, this might actually change to project to project, team to team. 
maybe okay cool I just can just get rid of those two triangles and we're back to quads here And of course, um, as I've been changing a lot of this, we're losing volume in the butt area. We want to make sure that um, the shape is as intended. You should probably just pull up your um, your high res here, but do some of that here. there. I'll give me this. And now that lets me move that in, move this in, ease that, ease that. And yeah, just easing. Easing a lot of these transitions. Um, I mean you could probably just add another edge dupe too just to round out the forms better. I think 12 around is probably more than enough right now. I feel like we need to shift some more stuff around, but I think. I think this is kind of getting on the right track, at least. We might just have to move this. But yeah, I think that's probably the best case, because I don't want to keep adding more. Um, if you need to add more to the butt um, to create this shape, because this is looking kind of weird, then I would you know, take another look at how I resolve things on this model here. Um, So I'm going to add a cut that's going to introduce some triangles, but I think we kind of need it so that we can actually create this um, the shape better. And then it's going to let me cut this this way, um, and then I can pull this out, pull that out here. Got a new end gun. I don't want to. I don't want there. I can do this. I can do this. Let's, um, before I get to carry it away, make sure that well, this is um, isolates these two pieces together. So the isolate um, button. Oh, there you go. So you could either go to, I think, show isolate select, reselected, or the control, what, um, grab, the grab a button. Or uh, this button here, and that'll isolate. And I just want to make sure that all of this is working.
So I'll just relax and move around to make sure that um, we're getting the volumes correct here. Take a look at myself. Twelve is a good even number. I don't know if I want to go more than that. So um, what I'll probably do here is just create a triangle at some point and then and then we can get this. Okay, all right, there we go. And then I can mess with how this, the rest of this stuff kind of um, relaxes. Hands. Um, let me take a quick look at the hands, and then I think we can call this video a uh, call it done on this video. I'm not liking some of this here, and I think maybe it's mm, what is it? First of all, how many round do we have? Ten rounds. Eight rounds. Unless these are really big silhouette changing shapes, I don't know if you need these cuts. Um, we could probably simplify this on this side to be honest. At least here, we can simplify that. I need to see what's happening here. Okay. All right. Edge loop, edge loop, edge ring, edge ring. Now I need to create an edge loop. So you're getting um, half of your loops right. Right, so that this has to kind of terminate, and this has to become. This needs to kind of go around. Instead of going around here, I would have it go here. And then um, not only that, but I would force things to start terminating earlier. Or at some point, that will help out a lot. Um, and let's say I add an edge loop here. I'm going to delete those extra ones. We'll spin this. It never does the right spin that I want it to do. But that's okay. We'll just do it manually. Um, now this will let me relax that. I can relax this accurately now because the edge flow is uh, working better. And now I'm getting a proper edge loop kind of around everything. Probably need one around the wrist just for better wrist deformation. And then maybe I can loop this this way. I 
I can now take this, actually make this more, and carry this down. Somehow there's a, for me, it's, I'm trying to add extra cuts, so that gives me the breathing room to reposition things. Um, and then I will optimize it later, but I'm just trying to get the edge flow basically to, to work first. So something, right, this, um, before I go forward with that, let me clarify where all of this is going. Okay, alright, so I want to carry this edge loop around. Around there, we can start encircling this base of the thumb, basically adding so you have figuring out where this loop is going. Wait, this okay for sure I know where that's going. I just don't know where this one's going. done. But then I can just rewire it above it. Okay, I think I think this is starting to work. Edge ring. So this edge ring or these edge loops will allow the thumb to articulate in as many different directions as it as it needs to. Right, because it can all pivot from this um, ball area here. I can merge that to kind of optimize this. Before I go any further, let me try and straighten this out. Again, um, straight edge loops is always going to be better. Ideally, we could even take that loop higher. Um, but it's starting to get messy here. Um, so I'll leave it for now. Um, yeah, I'll just leave that for now. What is this going? What is happening here? To that I'm not liking that but okay this is looking a little cleaner but still we're really, really dense. Nice. 
Okay. Um, I think these edge loops might be too close to each other as far as deformation goes. I think you could still stand to um, spread this out some more. Um, you want to make sure that you know, you're not getting anything collapsing. And then I need, um, I'm assuming this is roughly where the elbow is. Here we'll start edit messing with the edge flow. Slowly starting to come along. I don't like how this is based, so um, we could probably just do that. Yeah. What I would do here is I'll take that up here, merge that, and then I'll um, relax this here. Or relax this yeah um I find it hard to because when you're doing retopple and you're doing all this um, modeling your normals are getting kind of screwed up so I would just go select everything go to mesh display and do soften edge and then let's turn out the wireframe and now like I, I get a sense of how it's going to smooth across the forms which is going to help inform me of like decisions I need to make for um, the smoothing groups when I start baking but I think that'll be enough for now um, I'm actually going to since your cloak is tattered, um, you're probably going to want to just keep it as a plane instead of having thickness to it. Otherwise, you're going to. Well, we'll talk about it in class. I just wanted to reevaluate um, in person some of the, these decisions. And um, hopefully, that's enough to tide you over until class starts.